Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming down. Run. Um, My talk's called Passwords in the Wild. Basically, I did some research on what kinds of passwords people use based on some of the recent breaches that have happened. And this talks about those. So, just really quickly, my name is Ron Bose. I'm from Canada. That's a long way away. Um, the thing to remember about Canada is that we're basically like the US, except 10 years slower. So, they had a DMCA 10 years ago. We're getting ours now. So, so my blog is skullsecurity.org. I do a lot of uh, research. And I post it there. I post NMAP development stuff. I post my password database. I post all kinds of things. And I also post my updates to Twitter. My account is Yago x 6 And make sure you use the HTTPS protocol for Twitter. Otherwise, somebody's going to be posting as you. Uh, by the way, I work for Tenable Network Security. Uh, they make Nessus in case you don't know who they are. My primary job for them is reverse engineering. So we take enterprise stuff, whether it's SAP, whether it's Tivoli, whatever. And we figure out how it works and how we can implement proper checks for it. Um, if you have other, any ideas of enterprise products that most security scanners fail on, uh, come talk to me. We might be able to add it to our plans. Um, doesn't matter. So I also developed for the NMAP project. And I'm not talking about that today. If I do start talking about NMAP, I'm getting mixed up. So just stop me. So I've developed a lot of scripts for it, uh, SMB stuff, HTTP. I wrote some config detection back when that was popular. I haven't wrote in Stuxnet detection, so we won't talk about that. So, I'm going to talk about password cracking. I'm going to talk about the dictionaries I've made, uh, password breaches that have happened. And I'm going to talk about different strategies on how to crack passwords. So before I talk about password cracking, I'm going to talk a little bit about hashing. And I'm hoping most of you here will already know about hashing, so I'm not going to dwell on it for too long. I wrote this talk originally for an ISAC at conference, and they, they tend to be the CISO types, so I added a, a few slides for them. But basically, hashing is one-way conversion from a, from a password, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to a hash, like MD5 or SHA1 or whatever. The idea being that it's a one-way conversion, and, and going back is, is supposed to be difficult. And then salting. Uh, salting is adding something random to the password, whether it's a username, whether it's a random string. It doesn't matter what. And it's designed to prevent computation attacks and to slow down cracking. So some of the numbers I came up with. And this is just on my laptop. Um, against 90,000 hashes, I can do about 100 billion per, per second with SHA1 and 2 million SHA1 salted. And you'll notice that I actually use the European dots in the numbers. I was up all night converting my slides from Canadian to European, so keep an eye out for that. And why do we crack passwords? I'm sure you all know. Uh, one shell turns into 89. It's, it's awesome. So cracking hash is essentially a brute force. So you try every possible combination of, of characters and see which one hashes the same value as the hash you have. So I won't dwell on that any longer. The standard tool is John the Ripper. Um, there's a lot of other tools, Hashcat and things like that, but I use John the Ripper for most of it. It's a free open source tool. It's maintained by a solar designer in Russia. It's fast, it's customizable. It supports lots of hash types. Uh, for the statistics I'll be doing later, what I did was I, I took public password breaches. So breaches that weren't necessarily hashed to begin with. I hashed them all MD5s and checked how well the dictionaries worked against them. And I used John the Ripper uh, 1.7.6 for all that. Um, some of the, uh, the flags for John the Ripper that come in handy. Uh, word list lets you use your own word lists. So for example, John the Ripper comes in, comes with about 3,000 different entries, and each of those entries is mangled in different ways, making a list of about 100,000 entries maybe. You can take your own word list anywhere from 10 to a million entries or whatever you want and feed into John the Ripper, and that'll, that'll let you use your own custom word lists, and that's what I'll be doing later. Uh, the, the rules parameter turns on mangling. Um, along the right-hand side of the screen there, I, I showed some of what mangling does. So it, it adds different characters to the passwords, numbers, punctuation, stuff like that. Um, by default, if you use a word list, it doesn't turn on mangling, so make sure you do that. The standard in and standard out lets John the Ripper read, from the, read password guesses from standard in and write, write the guesses to standard out. So you can chain together multiple John instances, or you can chain together John with your own mangling tools, stuff like that. And again, that's what I'll be doing for the demos. So as I said, using the word list parameter, you can build your own dictionaries. And it's typically a fast way to crack passwords. If you're trying to crack passwords with a pure brute force, like you know, AAA, AAB, you're going to be there for days, weeks, months. Uh, with word lists, you can typically crack much more passwords much qu more quickly. So some examples of general dictionaries. Uh, English and German words. 
I, I don't know German at all, so this dictionary was made by somebody else who apparently knew what he was talking about. Um, names of cities, names of people. I found names of people are, are very good sources. The first time we needed names was for uh, the Crack Me If You Can Challenge at DEF CON this year. Uh, we, we, before the challenge, we wanted to build a high quality list of names. So we looked at IMDB, we looked at different wikis, and we got decent lists of actors and actresses, but it wasn't a really good list. So we, we decided to try Facebook and see if we can get a list of names from Facebook, which, as you probably heard, I did. And I posted the torrent for those names, and it became rather popular. So what kind of happened was, a reporter by the name of Daniel Emery, he, uh, he saw what I had done, and he wrote about it before he got in touch with me. And he, ex he wrote about it in the sense that private data has been compromised by a Facebook hacker, and that was his story. And other news outlets, all the news outlets basically picked it up and wrote the same thing. By the time he actually talked to me and corrected his story, it was already too late, and I was getting woken up by Interpol, and long story there. <coughs> anyway, other dictionaries. So I, I generated a couple from uh, public documents. One of them was the Holy Bible. So I took the King James Version of the Holy Bible and took basically every word in it and made a dictionary from that. I also took a couple of wikis. I took the Star Trek one and the Muppets. Uh, that was random. What's really cool about Wiki, uh, the host, people that host Wikipedia, is that they give you the ability to download their, their whole collections in XML format. What's really nice about that is that it prevents you from having to spider the site or piss off Facebook or whatever like I do. And you can just get the XML format and use it. So that's, that's what I did for these. Uh, other breaches. So the best way I found to build dictionaries is to use dictionaries from other breaches. So you, you, you take the list of the, the million or a thousand or whatever most common passwords, and that's your dictionary. So Edmap, John the Ripper both do that. The Edmap dictionary is based on three or four other breaches I'm talking about today. Uh, John the Ripper is much older, so I'm not sure what it's based on. Um, all, all these dictionaries and all the work breaches and everything that, they're all available on, on my wiki. So before I start the demos, I'll show you that. There's also site-specific dictionaries. So I mentioned that you could download the Star Trek wiki. If you happen to compromise a Star Trek fan site or any geek site, really, slash dot or whatever, the first thing you want to use to crack passwords is maybe your, a Star Trek database because passwords like NCC1701 are going to be fairly common. Uh, if you happen to compromise an adult site, you're going to want to use passwords based on adult passwords. You can also download the site itself using the wget. Uh, for a few of the demos, I did wget for about an hour and a half to get the site's content to see how well that works. And the site's database. So two sites, uh, carters.cc and phpbb, when they were compromised, so was their database. So every, every word, every email address, everything in the, in the database was posted online. And those make it really easy to, to crack passwords. <coughs> So here's a Linux command that I wrote to generate dictionaries. It's not that exciting. So just a quick aside, which has very little to do with my talk, carters.cc. I have no idea what the password for this is. Sorry. Let me just restore my Firefox configuration. It doesn't matter. Anyway, the carters.c database was compromised, and I wrote a mirror for it on my site. And if people are interested in getting access to this, I can give you access with a password that I completely forget. But I'll reset it. Um, the problem with the database is it's all in German, and I don't really know German, so I pretty much took a completely random thing here, which may or may not be interesting whatsoever. I, I, I had the ability to, to search messages people have posted, as well as uh, private messages, for uh, the forum conversations, stuff like that. So if you want to take a look at that, and if you want to tell me what the interesting stuff on it is, we can do that. The problem is that there's a lot of credit card numbers. Um, so I don't want to make it available to the general public because it might actually fall under PCI or, or something like that. But at the same time, I don't want to be compromising people's credit card numbers. So that's kind of the reason I don't want to make it completely public. So we're going to cover 10 breach sites. Um, I might do some faster because I don't have too much time here to talk about them. But we'll, uh, we'll talk about each one as we get there. And just a quick look at my wiki. That one I don't need a password for.
So if you go to my wiki and search for uh, passwords, you'll get a list of all the different breaches I've collected. Uh, the first one, So the first one is a list of dictionaries that come with common tools. So I have John the Ripper, K Enable, Config uh, the banned passwords from Twitter. And then I have leaked passwords. So these are the breaches that I was talking about that I'm gonna be going over. So I have a whole bunch of those. I'm not talking about all of them today. Um, some statistics. Um, other miscellaneous dictionaries, so English, German, American cities, um, porno dictionary, um, some t stuff from the high net. Just various things people have given me or that I've generated myself. And then the lists of things from Facebook. So everything you see here is available for download, so feel free to uh, check out my site and grab it. So here are the, the, uh, the 10 dictionary, or the 10 lists I'm looking at. The first one's gonna be MySpace. Uh, MySpace passwords are compromised in about 2006 by a phishing attack. Because it was a phishing attack, it's fairly low quality. Uh, the passwords you get are two kinds. First we have passwords that people who are too stupid to, to recognize a phishing attack use. And second, we have the passwords that people who knew it was a phishing attack used. So if you look at the top 10 passwords, the third one is fuck you, which is obviously people who knew they're being phished. But in addition, password one is the most common, and ABC123 is the second, and so on. The thing though about MySpace is that it requires you to use a symbol or a number in your password. So that's why everybody uses the number one on the, on the end. Um, so. You can see the counts are fairly low. Like this wasn't a very huge breach. Uh, 75 people used password one. So of course, the first thing we did after we saw the, uh, this top 10 list, well, the first thing I did was change our root password to something other than password one. And the second thing we did was we used this to generate the Nmap list because at the time we had no list for Nmap. So here's some statistics. Um, like I said, I basically just md 5 all the passwords in each list and tried cracking them to see which one's cracked the best. So 34% of passwords are based on people's names. Um, I won't dwell too much on these nut graphs. I'm gonna be posting this talk to Twitter and to my blog once it's all said and done, so if you want to go through in detail, feel free. Uh, the second one's PHPBB, and this one's the second biggest compromise of all time up to this week. Apparently there's, there's five million passwords flowing around somewhere that I haven't been able to find yet, so if I can find that, that'll be a new second biggest. If anybody has details on that, please let me know. But the PHPBB database was exposed by SQL injection, and this was done um, about a year and a half ago. I put January 09, it might be 08, that doesn't seem right. But since then, my friend has nonstop been trying to crack passwords from it, and he's basically obsessed with it. But he's, he's cracked 97.2% of passwords, which is almost all of them. He's, he's at the point now where he's cracking one password maybe a month, so it's, it's slowed right down. But they were MD5 hashed, and plain MD5 made it pretty easy to actually crack the passwords. Like I said earlier, uh, MD5, at least 9,000 MD5 passwords, I can crack them a half a trillion passwords per second on my laptop, never mind good hardware. So top 10 passwords was, was much more typical. Uh, we had 123456 password. The site name itself was there as well. Um, yeah, again, that's not the password for my luck. I just don't try that one. The people at PHPBB actually use a lot more names. So 44% of passwords at PHPBB are based on human names. 22% uh, were based on English words, about 12% based on German words. This is the first site where we, where we actually tried spidering the site itself. So about 14% of passwords were based on the actual site. Uh, this is fairly low compared to other ones. And the reason for that is when you generate passwords based on the site, it works best for sites that are very specific to a purpose, whether it's specific to Star Trek or to games or to whatever. A PHPBB was a fairly general site, so the passwords weren't all that specific. So it did a fairly poor job. The third one is rocky.com. Uh, rocky was the biggest breach of all time by far. So it's 32.7 million passwords were released, and the passwords were all in plain text. My understanding is that this was released by uh, SQL injection, but I have no real confirmation of that. But this is the basis of our Nmap password list now because it's, if you're ever gonna do research on one single password breach, this is the one because it, it's huge and it's plain text so you get all the passwords. So top three passwords for the site were all numeric, uh, followed by password, I love you, princess. Uh, Rocky itself was in the list as well, which again, people tend to use passwords based on the site. 
Uh, 41% of the passwords are based on people's names. Um, again, that's pretty pretty high number there. 18% um, were based on English words, 10% German words. So those, those do fairly decent. 23% uh, was cracked with the Star Trek wiki and equivalent with the Muppets wiki. And this was actually one of the worst performances. I think that's just due to the sheer size of the, of the database. And 14% again were cracked by spidering the site. And that's, uh, that's pretty typical. Oh, that's... Question. Sure. Question. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so the, the question was, how do we actually generate passwords based on names? So what I did was I took the names from Facebook, and there's about 170 million of these names. I took the first names and the last names individually, and I ran the John's Manley rules. So it basically, you know, it adds one to everyone, and it adds the S to the N, the capitalizes them, reverses them, stuff like that. So the 170 million names became about 50 times as big, so it was a fairly large list. And that's one of the reasons that this, this list did so well is because it was, it was just very, very big. But it was also fairly comprehensive. So this, uh, the fourth site, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that because people here might actually know how and make fun of me. So this is the finished word for Smart Alec, I'm told. And Smart Alec was compromised uh, maybe within the last six months or so. And I'm not sure how it was breached. My understanding is that the passwords were found on Pastebin or some similar site, and people mirrored them from there. So that's, that's where I got them from. Uh, the passwords to the site were done in plain text. There's no hashing that I'm aware of. And it's actually a fairly small breach, but it's interesting because it's a non-English breach, and there aren't too many of those. So the number one password was Salasana. Does anybody here actually know Finnish? Well, thank God. All right. So the last four passwords, um, I used Google Translate to figure out what the actual passwords were, Kaka, Moika, whatever. And the, tra the translations that Google gave were poo and buy, and I think that's just a polite way of saying swear words. So my impression is that the, the, the four of the top 10 passwords are swear words. Uh, dog is probably a female dog. So this site was one of the best ones for cracking with names. 80% uh, of the passwords in this one were cracked by using human names. Uh, about a quarter of them, 25%, were cracked by the Edmap and the John dictionaries, which was actually pretty good performance for those, considering that they're very small dictionaries. 62% uh, were cracked by the spidering site. By spidering site. Uh, PHPB and Rocky both got about 14% by spidering. This one got over 60%. The reason for that is because this is a fairly specific site, so it's, it's got a specific language that helps a lot, and it has a specific uh, purpose, which is games and stuff like that. So people were able to or we were able to crack passwords much better with that. Um, next one's finished, unknown. So this was kind of interesting because while I was searching for information on the previous site, Smart Alec, I came across a different list, which were also finished passwords, but was a different list. And this turned out to be one of the biggest lists I actually have. Now these passwords are stored in four different ways. A plain text, MD5, SHA1, and salted SHA1. The reason we see that kind of thing sometimes is when sites um, some types of forums and other kinds of software. Uh, SMF does this. It allows you to use old versions and then upgrade to new versions, but it doesn't convert the passwords right away. It converts them as the users log in. So any user that created an account when they're using plain text passwords and never created new accounts, their passwords stay stored in plain text. What's interesting about this is that it lets us see how much more passwords we crack with salted versus unsalted. So we were able to crack, and we worked on this for about six months maybe. We cracked about three quarters of them of the unsalted passwords and about half of the salted ones. And the reason is just speed. Like we were cracking the, the unsalted ones at a couple trillion per second, and the salted ones we were cracking at a couple million per second. So the top ten passwords again, uh, the, the finished word for passwords, the first one. Um, the three po probable swear words are the, are the last three. But there's also one interesting one, the V Q S A B L P. And we weren't sure what this one was at first, so we did some research on it. And it turns out that there's some specific type of software for posting spam on forums, and that software has this password hardcoded into it. So it's kind of interesting that the, the sixth most common password was a spammer. So here's kind of the distribution of the passwords, um, or the, uh, the cracking. These ones cracked decently, but not very well. You can see that the poorest ones were the, the English and the German lists. They did about 10%. And the U.S. cities and the Bible did very poorly. The reason for this, again, is because this is 
from a finish site. I'm not sure which finish site, but <clears throat> they were, uh, the English is obviously gonna do poorly on that. So the next two sites are both religious ones. Uh, Faith Writers is a Christian uh, book site. It's where authors come and discuss topics. So the breach, as far as I understand, was due to access control problems. So people were able to go to the user.php or whatever the page happened to be to view their own account and then add ID equals three to the end of it to view that person's account. And when you view that person's information, you can also edit it and you can also view their password. So that's kind of two mistakes. There's an access control problem and the site should not, should not be displaying the password back to the user. So those are, that's a big mistake. <clears throat> um, somebody, apparently when this actually happened, there's a lot of people who are posting, you know, compromising Facebook accounts and compromising other people's accounts based on this. But somebody stopped and downloaded all the passwords too, and that's what we have access to. Uh, interestingly, when I was doing some research to figure out what actually happened with this for this talk, I found out that the admins denied the compromise ever happened. And when people posted evidence, like here's the password lists, they came back and said, well, we've already fixed the issue, so you're not in danger anymore, don't worry. I guess they don't realize that people use passwords on multiple sites and stuff like that. So that was kind of interesting. So top 10 passwords, the first one's one, two, three, four, five, six. The next one's blank. So this site actually love blank passwords. The next ones are basically all religious in nature. So writer goes back to what I was saying about how people tend to use passwords based on the site. And then Jesus one, Christ, blessed, John 3, 16. These are all religious passwords on a religious site, so can I show you how, again, people choose passwords based on what they're interested in? And these passwords cracked fairly well. Um, over half of them cracked by, by using names, about 30% uh, based on English words. The Muppet and Star Trek wiki did a fairly good job. And this is one of the best performances of the Bible, too. Uh, the word list I made from the Bible cracked about 12%. So it's kind of expected. People probably use biblical names and things like that. Uh, singles.org is another religious really site. Um, it was compromised the same way. If you knew the six digit account number for people's accounts, you could view their profile and access their passwords. So basically the same thing. Their top 10 passwords, very similar. Uh, you have the, the standard one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you have the religious Jesus, Christ, love, uh, stuff like that, sunshine. And here's, here's how well they cracked. And these ones cracked very well. So 60% six, cracked based on names uh, about 35% on, on the English words. The Muppets and the Star Trek wikis both did fairly well. Uh, at the end of Dictionary and John did quite well also. <coughs> Two more, um, three more. Tuskell. Tuskell stands for the ultimate strip club list. And this is just released about two months ago now. So it was compromised in SQL injection. These passwords are plain text and there's not a whole lot of interesting things. Uh, the name of the site's in the top 10. Uh, the word stripper's in the top 10. So is monkey. You can try to figure that one out. There's not a lot of exciting uh, things here. The password's cracked fairly well overall, but nothing too, too much to point out. But when I was doing research on this one, I was looking at some of the passwords people used, and I stumbled upon another dictionary that was basically 10,000 porno passwords. And the reason I know that the porno passwords is because of the top 10 list, where there's a few words that indicate it. We have pussy, 69, 69. Mustang, again, you can try to figure that one out. These ones also cracked significantly well because I'm actually not sure why. The most interesting thing to point out here is that the, the, the list I made based on the Bible, it cracked about 12% of the two religious sites. It cracked 15% of this site. So <laughs> I, I can't figure that one out, but a lot of people use the uh, biblical passwords on foreign sites. I'm not religious, I don't want to get in trouble, so that's, that's all I'm saying. So the last one I already talked about a little bit was carters.cc. Uh, we spent the last eight months trying to crack these passwords, and we've got about 60%. Uh, they're salted SHA1. Um, as I showed you earlier, there's a lot of interesting information about credit card thieves and things like that, but it's all in German, so I'm not sure if it's actually interesting. For all I know, it's recipes. So, <coughs> so the top three passwords are all numeric. The next one's, I think, is hello in German. The fifth one, I asked my friend what that one means, and apparently it's a swear word. And another thing I found too, the, the Quartz password, I had to look up why people use Quartz and found out that the keyboards in Germany have a Z and the Y switched, so kind of interesting there. A lot of people think they're elite too, they use elite passwords. One thing to mention here actually that we notice as a trend is that people often use passwords followed by two numbers, and those numbers are often the year that they're born. 
So I was born in 83, so my password might be, you know, hello 83. Uh, we saw a lot of passwords on the cars.cc site that were, you know, like hello 93 or 94. And we're thinking these people are probably 15, 16 years old and they're trading credit cards. Like, that's kind of scary. So this one, uh, this one cracked fairly well using names and things like that. Uh, this is the only site where the, the German dictionary actually did better than the English dictionary, which is not too surprising, but it's also a little surprising because the German dictionary is about 10 times as big as the English one, because apparently the words are 10 times as big as the English words. Um, the site itself was, I, I, took the, uh, I took the compromised SQL database and made a word list based on that database using the command earlier, and used those, and those cracked about 50%, over 50% of the passwords. So using the site's own database cracked quite well. So I wrote this slide yesterday because I was talking to somebody on Twitter about how many of the top 10 pa how many passwords are actually salted or hashed. Because in one of the talks yesterday, somebody had mentioned how passwords in, the, in databases are usually hashed. Or it turns out um, about seven out of 10 were just plain text. Um, the the SmartLock site, I'm not sure what they were done. Uh, MySpace passwords were fished, so we don't know how they were hashed. The rest were basically either MD5 or SHA1. Of the three that were hashed, or yeah, of the three that were actually hashed, uh, one was MD5, one was SALTA SHA1, and one was all of the above. So I give them one a half point. And the success rate with the MD5 password was 97%. Success rate with the SALTA password was 60%. So you can predict what half your passwords just, just by SALTing. So these graphs are going to be impossible to read, so I'm not going to dwell on them too much. But it's basically a summary of which passwords crack the best. Um, this one's a little more interesting. So the names are the first column, and they crack the most passwords almost overall. Uh, the two wikis cracked most passwords besides names. If you grab a copy of the slides, you can see these close up. I'm not going to worry too much. So overall, the names did best. They ranged from 34% to 78%. And like I said, the names are the biggest dictionary also, so it's a little bit unfair in that sense. English words did well, and the Bible did poorly. Uh, wikis did quite well. And the wikis, the reason they do so well is not because they have specific terms on them, just because they're really big databases with a lot of English words on them. Um, scraping sites vary greatly, and it really depends on the type of site. So, now I'm just going to talk about three of the cracking strategies. And the way I, I tested these ones were two different ways. The, the first ones were I took two dictionaries. I took the PHPBB and Rocky because they were the two biggest ones. And I tried different dictionaries with specific manual rules, like one type of manual rule only against them, and see how well they crack. And then Following that, I did some grepping and just looked for patterns, like how many people actually use a, a word and then a number, or a number and then a word. So can I compare those? Then I, look, then I looked at numeric passwords. So I basically saw how many people actually use just a number for their password and how many digits that number happened to be. And third, I looked at how many people use lead speak in their passwords. So we'll see that. So John's mapping rules are written in a very specific language, and I don't really know that language at all. So it all looks like German to me. but. It, it's fairly well commented, and there was a lot of research done for these. Uh, Solar Designer, the guy who maintains this, put a lot of work into these rules, and yeah. So the first nine manual rules, um, it's all lowercase, first character is uppercase, first character is uppercase, and it's end with an S, um, adding one to the end, reversing it, adding one to the beginning, uh, capitalizing it, and adding a two to the end. So those are the order that John does them in. Now, what I found is that the best passwords are all lowercase, because that's what people seem to like using. The second best passwords are all lowercase followed by a one, and the next one is, let's just bring up the graph. The next one is, all, first letter is uppercase and followed by an S, and the rest are all pretty low. You can see on this graph that all lowercase basically dominates. 18% of people use the English word in lowercase. And also, for dictionaries, I'm using just English words, nothing else. So, using grep now, what are the top password formats? Well, the number one password format I found was just letters, nothing else. About half of the passwords in Rocky and PHP both use just letters. The next one was lowercase letters. The next one was lowercase letters followed by two digits, or all, sorry, not lowercase. The third one was all letters followed by two digits. And this is kind of interesting. I actually thought one digit would be better, but it actually wasn't. The next one's one digit. The next one's lowercase followed by a one, and so forth. So here's kind of a, a graph of that. So you can see again that just all letters dominates this graph. So the numeric passwords. The majority of people use six character passwords that are all numbers. Or the majority of people who use numbers in their passwords use six numbers. And that's obviously one, two, three, four, and six. 
The second most common was actually eight, eight digits, four by seven, nine, five, and 10. Um, the, total number of people, the total number of people I used anywhere between one and 10 digits was about 10%. Um, three and a half million for Rocky. So here's, here's a graph of how it looks. Um, so that's kind of the distribution. The next is suffixes. So how, how many people use numbers that end with, or passwords that end with numbers? So as I said earlier, the most common one was two digits. So password one, two, for example. Uh, one of the very common ones I found was Jordan 23. And I had to look that one up to see what it actually meant. It turns out Michael Jordan from the NBA, his jersey number is 23. So that's, that's a very common password. So two digits were the most common, followed by one, four, and three. Uh, here's a graphical view of it. <clears throat> now something I found was that a lot of people use class of XX for their passwords. So class of 03, class of 04, class of 05 for when they graduated. So I took all of these and graphed them to see what it would look like. And this is just, just from Rocky. And it actually turned out to be a fairly smooth graph. So the most common one was class of 08 and class of 09. And on the other side of that is, uh, it, it gets empty. It goes back to class of 76 actually, which is kind of surprising to me. So <clears throat> the last one's gonna be the lead passwords. So I start with the English dictionary and I did the following transformations. You know, A to at, B to eight, C to bracket, et cetera. Um, who can guess what the most common one was? Three. E to three is the, third, is the second most common. Um, o to zero is actually the most common, followed by I to one, E to three, and L to one. So the total number of passwords cracked by just changing O's to zeros in English words was about 12,000 out of 30 million. So that's actually a pretty small number. Uh, here's what the graph looks like. So O to zero, I to one, E to three is the most common. Once you get down to S to dollar sign and A to at, you basically have zero. The, the last few, um, V to slash slash and X to greater than less than, nobody used those. Not one person in Rocky or PHP. So I, I took all the different lead speak possible in every, pro in every permutation I could, and it cracked about 2,000 for PHPVB, which is 0.8%. No, oh, use a decimal there, not a comma, sorry. And I cracked about 0.3% with Rocky, so very small. But some of the really cool passwords I cracked, I just watched them scroll by. Uh, monophonic, Motorola, Greenery, Hellfire. Um, my favorite one was probably the second last one, Degenerated, because I just sit, I'd actually sit there and replace the E's with the threes with E's to figure out what that was supposed to be. And then there's Diskette, Chopsticks. Um, the fourth last one too, Chameleons. They're pretty impressive passwords. The problem is because they based them on an English word, it, it was able to crack it fairly quickly. Doing every possible permutation of the English dictionary took me about two hours on my laptop, so it's pretty fast if you have decent hardware. And here's a program I wrote to feed the passwords in, in the John. So it's about 20 lines of Ruby, maybe, and it's very easy to customize. One thing that, since I've been here in uh, Austria, that I actually, I actually realized I should have done was try converting O's to O's with the two dots on it and different accents, and see how many people actually use accents in their passwords. But maybe next time. So, sort of a summary. Uh, plain English words, lowercase, cracked about 12% of passwords. Uh, one, at, at appending one, cracked about 2%. And capital and S appended, cracked about 1.4%. Uh, least peak passwords, cracked about 0.04%. So almost no passwords. But the advantage is that we cracked the very difficult passwords. So we, we cracked a lot of really complicated passwords using least peak. So although it may not crack many, it cracks the good ones. And the numeric cracked about anywhere between 5.5 and 0.7. The most common password formats were all alphabetic, and then alphabetic followed by two digits, one digit, four digits. Uh, the most common password with the number at the end was two digits. So a few other methods. Um, misspelled words. Uh, a friend of mine has done a lot of work on, on password cracking. He's the one that's, that's cracking the PHP BB passwords still. And he, he wrote a misspeller. So he would take the English dictionary, pipe into his misspell program, which will switch E's and I's and other common mistakes and I'll feed that into PHPVB, or into John the Ripper, rather, and see how many patches it cracks. So what you can do is use John the Ripper with a word list, then use standard out, pipe that into a misspeller, and pipe that into a lead speak, and pipe that back into John, and you'll have years to wait, but you'll get a lot of passwords. Another common, common password that we found was, was other languages. So taking uh, Chinese and Japanese, um, the phonetic versions of the words, I don't remember what those are called, but trying the different combinations of those rather than trying actual letters 
actually crack quite a few passwords. Uh, Unicode symbols, like I mentioned, adding access to the characters. Uh, keyboard patterns. So I found a lot of people use th things like QWERTY or QWERTZ, and then QAWS are basically, you know, skip one or there's a lot of keyboard patterns. I wish I had time to actually check those out. So sort of the conclusion is that uh, sites are always being breached and that passwords are always being released. Um, I, I took this talk from more of an offensive perspective than a defensive. When I did this talk for Isaka, I took it from the defensive perspective, but defense is, is boring, so I took offensive. The vast majority of passwords are alphabetic, but the really elite ones tend to be the really good ones. So the admins will be more likely to use elite passwords. And with good techniques, 97% plus cracking is possible. And if you have any questions, I think I'm probably early. Um, feel free to email me or to uh, come to my blog or Twitter or whatever. So are there any questions? Quick round now. <laughs> Any questions, please raise your hand. So it's a question about um, online cracking rather than offline. Um, I'm wondering that kind of more more sites are starting to adopt things like. Um, Detecting multiple attempts from the same IP address, and they'll block or they'll kind of back off. Yes. Um, so well, that kind of speaks the difference between um, brute forcing versus cracking. So I've done research on both, but this is more about cracking. Uh, with with brute force, I find that the best technique is to take the, the most common passwords. So take the top ten passwords on any of these given sites, combine them, and see which ones are the most common and then try one password for every user rather than every password for each user. And I find that very rarely gets blocked. Um, if you're actually programming a site, I would recommend blocking it by IP address, not by user, but I don't see that very commonly. But actually, actually me a story I meant to tell is that last week, just to the boredom, I, I wrote uh, a tweet saying, if you want to see if your password's in any of my dictionaries, come to the site and fill it out. And that was based on a question I had at uh, the ASACA meeting where somebody asked me if I could make a service where you can check if your passwords are compromised. And I said, absolutely, just send me your password and I'll reply yes. <laughs> so I, I actually wrote that and I didn't actually look at the results. I'm not sure how many people actually submitted real passwords, but the vast majority of people actually knew it was happening and just tried to spam me and stuff. I got links to all kinds of things, Living Party and, and what have you. So. Do we have any more questions? Um, I wanted to ask about cracking salted passwords. You yeah. mentioned you could also do that. It was just slower, but I'm not sure how you do it. Do you have to know the salt beforehand? And yeah. if you do, how do you get it? Yeah, so typically when you, when you have a salted password, when you're developing an application, you store the salt in the database along with the password. Uh, the salt isn't meant to be a secret. So with credit cards, you have the CVV numbers or whatever, whatever they call in Europe, where when sites store the credit card number, they don't store the CVV. With salts, it's not like that. With salts, you typically store the salt with the password. So when people compromise a list of passwords, they typically, or hashes, they typically also compromise the salts. The, uh, the reason salts make it more secure, though, is that you can't do, for example, rainbow tables. So you can't pre-compute every possible MD5 up to 10 characters and just do a match. Because with salts, it makes your password not 10 characters, but makes it 24 characters or whatever. So effectively, it, it prevents rainbow tables. But it also prevents people from, from cracking passwords easily. And the reason for that, which I didn't really go over, which I probably should have, is that when you're cracking passwords that aren't salted, you hash the first value. So you hash one, two, three, four, five, six, which hashes to E, 10, whatever. And you compare it 100,000 times, once for each password that was compromised. When it's salted, you do an MD5 with the first salt, you check. You do MD5 with the second salt, you check. So you have to do an MD5 for every single password in, in the table, not just one MD5. So that's why we get half a trillion checks per second with no salt, and compared to two million checks per second with salt. So in case you're wondering about that. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, what's the longest password you found in any one of these breaches? That's a I mean, good question. We know the short one, the shortest one is blank. But what's the, longest <laughs> the longest one, I've, I never thought to check that. If somebody knows a Linux command to get it really fast, I have the password dictionaries locally. I, 
Can I think of the uh, thing where I command to do it though? Because I have them stored. BBZ kit. Like I have all the passwords here. Feel free to find a way to uh, to find the longest one. Mm -hmm. Found it. Found it. <laughs> <laughs> found it. Okay, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Password. Eight characters. Yeah. I can't think of a command offhand to sort by length. It'd be cool if I could though. Um, question: uh, do, you, do you use graphics cards to crack? I haven't. Uh, I was talking earlier about the contest we did at DEF CON. Uh, we actually got second place using basically just uh, servers with multiple cores and a couple hours of mainframe time. And we got second place. The people that got first place put a whole lot less work into actually figuring out patterns and stuff. And they just used 1,000 graphics cards and just blew us out of the water by, by cracking at 100 quadrillion passwords a second or whatever they had. So, so although I haven't personally done work with graphics cards because I simply don't have the hardware, it, it's a very good strategy. I've learned recently that Amazon's EC2, you can gra get graphics cards on that. And I think that'd be uh, interesting to try out to see how well you can crack an EC2 with graphics cards. At that contest, we actually used EC2 as without the graphics cards for our cracking. Do we have another question? Maybe I might ask a question myself. Sure. Um, have you done any statistics on the, let's say you have a site that requires a specific um, amount of security on a password, let's right. say. You would have to use uh, at least one special character, at least uppercase once, at least a number. So what would the most common um, terms of the most common passwords on these uh, sites be? Yeah, so I, w I wish I could get some good statistics on those sites. Uh, the only one I have is MySpace, and those statistics, statistics are very poor because of a phishing attack. But I'd like to see more, more breaches of sites where people do use a password policy. So it requires a number, requires all that. This is a version of the talk I gave at uh, SACA, where I actually did some statistics on that because I was talking about defense and how well po password policies work. So here's what I did to get this number was I took the Rocky Dictionary and added a filter. So how many passwords contain a number, how many, or take all the passwords that contain the number, take all the passwords that have more than 10 characters, more than 14 characters, whatever, and see which one we cracked the most of. So by default with the dictionary I was using, we cracked about 23% of the passwords. We cracked about 17% of the passwords that are seven or more characters, which is pretty much not that much worse. Uh, we found eight plus characters was a third, uh, contains a number was a fourth. So we still cracked about 13% of passwords with numbers in them, so they actually didn't, didn't help that much. And when you get to nine characters that contain symbol, we start getting pretty low. So the jump between nine plus characters, we cracked about 9.2%, and when it contains a symbol, we cracked about, about 6%. That's a pretty big jump. When we start getting to 12 character passwords, or even passwords with the numbers and symbols, we start getting down to below 1% cracked. Now these numbers, look good, but I'm not sure how realistic they are. Because if you tell people you have to put a number in your password, they're gonna use password one. If you tell people to put a capital letter in their password, it's gonna be password with a capital P. Uh, so this site didn't force people to use special characters. So the people that did use special characters tended to do it as part of a, a better password. So does that answer your question? <laughs> Um, if there's no more questions, uh, thanks a whole uh, lot for your talk. Thank you very much.